Hi guys, it's me Swastik and in this video, I'll be showing you guys how to create your own Discord bot with Python using Discord.py. So let's begin. Now you do need to understand basic Python in order to follow along with this tutorial series because Discord.py is an advanced library. So make sure you know Python and also make sure that you have Python installed because I'll not be covering that in this video. So the first step in order to create our bot is to create an application. And for that, we need to go to discord.com slash developers slash applications and click on new application. Let's name our application. So I'll be calling it tutorial bot and click on create. Once you have created your application, you need to click on bot and this will create your bot. Now you can make your bot private. So I will actually turn this off and make my bot private. And if you want your bot to be public, you can leave this on. So I'll click on save changes. So let's add the bot to our server. So I'll click on OAuth2 and you need to scroll down and on scopes you need to select bot and these are the bot permissions so these are the permissions that your bot will have I will give my bot administrator permissions but I would recommend you don't do this you should probably select the specific permissions for example send messages manage messages ban members kick members choose accordingly and it depends on your bot if you want your bot to be able to do something you should select that but since I want my bot to be able to do anything, I will give it administrator permissions. Make sure you are very careful while choosing permissions. I trust myself, so I will actually give my bot administrator permissions. So let's copy the link that it generated here. Let's go on a new tab and let's paste it. And this will allow us to add the bot. So let's select my server, which is the Coding Academy. Now you can join my server if you have any questions or need help with something. And the link will be in the description below and also in the top comment. All right, let's click on continue. Here you can choose the permissions so I can disable permissions. Whoever you give this link to will be able to add the bot so they can choose what permissions they want to give the bot. I will keep administrator checked and I will click on authorize. And then you'll need to solve the captcha. and this will add your bot so let's see if it is here so as you can see we have managed to add our bot and it is offline but we will write our code and it will actually be online soon so let's install discord.py now to install discord.py you just need to type pip install discord.py now this could be different for you you could have pip3 install discord.py or you could have python3 hyphen m pip install discord.py whatever works for you just do that and for me this works so i'll just Press enter and this should install discord.py. All right, discord.py is now installed. Let's move to coding our bot. I'll be using VS Code to make my bot. You could use any code editor that you want. You could use Sublime Text or PyCharm. I'll be using VS Code because I like it. It's personal preference. You can use whatever you want. So I just have a folder and I have a main.py file here. You could call your file bot.py. So let's import discord. It's just gonna be import discord. And we'll actually be using commands.bot, which is a command handler and it's much easier to use compared to discord.client. So we'll be importing commands from discord.ext, from discord extensions, we'll be importing commands. So let's create our bot. It's simply bot equals commands.bot. Now commands.bot does take in a prefix, so we can specify command prefix. So for now, let's set our prefix to be a period, which means that the bot will respond to anything that starts with the period, for example, period help, and the bot will respond with a help message. Now, there are other parameters that you could pass to bot as well, like intense, activity, but I'll be covering them in a future video. So for now, this is fine. All right, let's create our first command. So I'll just paste the command here and I'll explain what it does. So we have our command here. Let's just ignore this decorator for now. I'll explain what it does soon. But you can see we have a function which is an async function. I'll also explain what this does soon, but we just have a function called hello, which has a parameter CTX. And what we do inside is we await CTX.reply and hello. So you should have a rough idea of what this command does by now. So what it does is if you type dot hello, it will respond with hello. So let's just remove this. So this is our first command. I will explain again what this does soon. Let's just make sure that our bot runs. So we need to do bot.run and we need to give it our token. Now this token you can get from your developer portal. I will just uh, open this, go back here, go back to bot. So you can find the token here. You can copy the token, you can regenerate the token. So what is the token basically? The token allows the 
code that we have written here to communicate with the Discord API. And this is our authentication token. So it's kind of like your password, right? So it's a bot's password. You need to make sure that it's secret. Do not show this token to anyone because they could use your bot and if they have admin permissions, they just have admin on your server. So make sure you do not leak this token and you can also regenerate it if you have accidentally leaked your token or shown it to someone. So for now, let's just copy this token and let's go back to our code. And in here, we need to paste the token as a string. So this is all the code that we need for our bot. Now, there is a better way of um, storing your token instead of directly using this here, which I will discuss in this video as a bonus part. So you need to wait till the end to see how to securely store your token. So let's save this. And once you have saved this, you can run your bot. Now, I just have Visual Studio Code, which allows me to run the bot directly from my code editor. If you are using something like Sublime Text, you'll need to open your command prompt and you'll need to navigate to your folder and then run main.py, python main.py. But this allows me to directly use it. So I'll just run it and you will see that this bot is running now. So let's check our server and see if the bot is online. So here I will ping tutorial bot and you'll be able to see that the bot is actually online. Let's see if it responds to our hello command. And there you go, the bot replied to us and it replied to us with hello. So that our bot works. Let's now come back here and let's stop the bot from running. Now in order to stop the bot, you need to click on your terminal and press control C. And this will stop the bot from running. Now every time you make a change in your code, you'll need to rerun your bot in order to see the changes. So that means you'll need to stop the bot from running and then rerun the bot. That means you'll need to stop the bot from running like this and then run the bot again. So let me now explain what these three lines do. Well, first we have a decorator, which is bot.command. Now what this does is it registers this function as a command. So whenever there is a dot hello, and this hello is actually the name of the command. So whenever the bot receives a message like hello, it'll see that it starts with the prefix and it is hello, which is registered as a command. Now this CTX, that is the context, contains everything that you'll need in order to interact with the, in order to interact with the user. So it has ctx.guild, which you can access the server from, server details from. CTX has a ctx.author, which is the user that triggered the command. It also has ctx.channel, it has ctx.message. We'll cover all of that in a future video, but you just need to know that CTX is passed into a command. Now, if you want to specify a command to have some arguments, you can specify them like, for example, I can specify a name and specifying this argument means that whenever the user will type something like dot hello, then a space and then swas, it will take this swas and it will pass in as an argument to name. So then you can use hello and then the name. So this is basically how the command handler works. So we'll talk about this again soon. Let's remove this. So the hello function gets called with the CTX, with the context, and then we reply to the context with hello. So what is this async def? Well, this async def means that this is an asynchronous function and discord.py is an async library. So it requires you to use async functions. Now, let me explain what this actually does and what's the use of this. So let's imagine that your bot has two commands. In one command, the bot asks the user for their name and then waits for them to enter their name. And once they enter their name, it just says hi, the name right? It's not the same as them saying dot hello and then the name. Instead, it's like they say dot hello and then the bot says, please enter a name and then they type a name, okay? So this is a command, for example. And let's say you have another command, which let's say is just dot add and it adds two numbers like one and one, which will give two. So let's say you have these two commands and let's say that two people at the same time use the commands at the same time. So what I mean is the first user uses the hello command and the second user uses the calculate command. So what will actually happen if discord.py wasn't async is it would wait. It would wait for the first user to enter their name and it will completely block the code. It will block the code from uh, interacting with the other user. So what this means is that until the user actually enters their name, nobody can use the bot, which is actually bad. So what discord.py does is it uses asynchronous programming with async IO, which makes it so that while the bot is waiting for something to happen, it will continue doing other stuff. 
So let's say if you are requesting an API and the API takes some time to respond. So while the bot is waiting for that, it will be able to respond to everything else. So what this means is that you shouldn't be using any blocking code in your commands. One example of this would be time.sleep. If you have worked with it before, you know that it blocks the entire thing from doing anything and it just stops working. So you do not want to do that because if you do that inside a command, it will completely stop the bot and it will not be doing anything. Instead, you should be using something called asyncio.sleep, which asynchronously sleeps and everything else will work fine. Again, something like requests. Don't use requests because it is blocking. Use AIO HTTP. And um, I will explain all of these concepts in a future video. I already have a video on AIO HTTP if you want to make async requests. So you can view the video in the card. So now you understand why you'll need to await it because it is async. So while it's replying, it could be doing something else as well if it takes some time to reply. All right, so this is what it does. Let's now create a new command. So I'll just copy this here and I'll create a new command. So let's make the second command be able to add numbers. So what I mean is we'll call this function add and we'll take two numbers. So we'll take our num1 and we'll take our num2 and we will take them and then we'll reply with num1 plus num2. So what you'll see is this will not work the same way as you want it to work. This will actually return a string. Num1 will be a string. So if I actually save this and let's try this, let's see what happens. You can guess what will happen if these are two strings, right? It'll actually concatenate them instead of adding them. So if I test this, if I do add and I do one and two, you will see it'll return 12, which is not the correct answer, but it is actually correct in the way that these are strings. One is a string, you add a two to it, it becomes 12. So if you want these to be numbers, Discord.py has a useful feature, which is a converter. So I can type in num1 and num2 to be integers and Discord.py will understand that these need to be integers and it will pass integers to us. So now if I save it and then I rerun it, like I control C this, then I rerun this and let's go back um, here. I can do dot add one and two. And now you'll see we get three, which is nice. So let's say you wanted your command to start with a number, one hello. Now you'll see that this creates a syntax error because functions, because identifiers in Python cannot start with a number. So for this, what you can do, you can call this one underscore hello, and you'll actually be able to overwrite it by saying name equals one hello. So what this will do, is this will use the name instead of using the function name, it will use this name. So let's stop this and let's run it again. Let's go back. And you'll see I can do one hello. So this is how you can use the name uh, instead of using the function name. This could be useful if you had a command named import, right? Import cannot be a variable name because it is a reserved keyword. So you can name your function import underscore and you can name the function import. Now this could be also useful if you have something in the global scope and you want the same name for the command. Like for example, if you have something like a as a global variable and you have true and you want it to be actually a, the command name, and you want to actually use this a inside of this command, you'll see that this will not work because a is actually a function. So what you can do is have a underscore and use the a underscore sorry and you can use a as the name of the command now before we end this video i would like to show you guys the documentation for discord.py this is really useful and you can get everything that you want from discord.py here that is let's say for example you wanted to see what the ctx parameter has right so what you can do is go here and type context this is the full form of ctx and you can see that we have commands.context and here once it loads you can see all the attributes and all the methods that the context attribute has so you can see we have ctx.reply which we just used there is ctx.send we have ctx.author we have ctx.bot ctx.channel and you can always refer to the documentation for anything that you need let's say we wanted to look at how reply works you can see that we need to await the reply Right, so await ctx.reply, then the content is the thing that we want to send. So we send hello. And you can see this is a shortcut method to the messageable.send, which is await ctx.message.send. You can see what it raises, so any errors, 
So HTTP exception, if something happened and it failed, and it raises forbidden, if there are not proper permissions to send the message, and invalid arguments, and it returns the message that was sent. So this is useful, right? You can store the message that was sent. So you can always refer to the documentation if you need any help. All right, let's move on to our bonus section. Now in this bonus section, I'll be showing you guys how you can store your token securely. There are many ways of storing tokens. You can use JSON files, any other config files like YML files. You can use Python files as well to store tokens. But for this, we'll be using environment variables. So we'll create a new file called .env and we'll have a token. So in all caps, token equal to, and we'll take the token from here. We'll copy this and we'll paste it here. Right, and we'll paste it here, then we'll save it, and then we can close this. And we'll need to install a library called python.env. So what you'll need to do is pip install python.env, and this will install the library. And once it's done, you can import it. So from .env, we'll need to import load.env. And at the top of your file, you can load it, so load env. And this will load your environment variables. And in order to access it, you'll need to do from OS import get env. And this you can then paste here. And then you can give it the environment variable. So we have token because this is what we named it. You can use any API keys you can enter here and you can use that. So we just have this. So what this does is it separates your code from your token and you can anytime change your token when you want to by directly changing it from here. So that's it. Let's make sure that our bot runs. We will save this so there are no errors and we can go back and type hello and it works. Now if you do push your code to GitHub, you should add a dot git ignore. And inside of this, you need to add your dot env, which will make sure that you don't include your dot env to your GitHub repo. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe. In the next video, we'll be creating embeds and doing a lot of other stuff. So make sure to subscribe and you'll be notified when I upload the new video. So I'll meet you next time. Goodbye.